and welcome back to another episode of Easy As That. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to fully set up this Mirabella Junior Wi-Fi Nebula and Star Projector. Let's get it open. This product was sent to me by Mirabella Junior. Now it's important that you know that my review will still be completely honest. Now this product only works with 2.4G HZ networks and not 5G HZ. Now first up here we have the instructions, followed by the Star Projector itself. As you can see, it looks like this. And next up, we have the power cord. Now here's an epilepsy warning. If you can't look at flashing lights, then please don't watch this video. Now you're also gonna need to remove this protective film sticker as well. Now please be careful of this light as it can hurt your eyes. Now let's set this up. You need to start off by plugging it into power. Now we can plug this end of the cable into the back of our star projector, just like that. Now we can connect this to a power point nearby. Now I've plugged it in, I need to turn it around so the button is facing me. Now, as you can see at the moment, it's not flashing, so we need to press and hold it for five seconds until it does flash. As you can see, the two LEDs on the side are now flashing. This means we can get started on the pairing process and actually download the app. Now for some reason, when you do press this button, it just changes to different scenes, all you need to do is simply hold it for five seconds just like we did before and eventually it should go away and then the light should start to flash again. As you can see, it's gone back to this and now it's starting to flash. The app you'll need is called Mirabella Genio. The spelling's just in the corner there. And now you can either scan the QR code on screen or simply type the name into your app store. Now you need to tap download. Once you've got the app, tap sign up. Now you can read their user agreement and privacy policy and next you need to put in your email and country. Next tap get verification code. Now this will send a verification code to the email that you just typed in. If you can't find it make sure you check your spam and junk folders. Once you've signed into your account and the button on the side of your projector is blinking rapidly like I showed you how to do before you can tap add device. Now a pop-up should come up and then it should ask you to pay your projector. You need to tap go to add. Now don't worry if this didn't show up for you as I'll show you what to do in a few minutes. Now if this did work for you, all you need to do is just tap the plus next to Bluetooth device at the top. And then finally, you just need to put in your Wi-Fi network details. Now it will try to add your device. Make sure that your device is actually plugged in and the light is flashing rapidly. You also need to make sure that both your device and your projector are relatively close to your Wi-Fi router. And there you go, our device is successfully paired with the app. Now we can tap done in the top right hand corner. Now let's say if that pop-up didn't show up for you before in the add device menu, that's all right. Go back into that menu and then tap electrical. Now at the end you should see Genio Star Projector, just tap it. Here, it will ask you to put in your Wi-Fi name and password. Make sure it's a 2.4 GHz network and not 5 GHz. And now it will ask you to make sure that your device is actually blinking rapidly. Now, I showed you how to do this before. All you need to do is hold the button on the side for five seconds and then it should. Now, once you've done that, confirm indicator blinking rapidly and then tap next. And now your device will start to add with the app. Now please be patient as this may take a few minutes. And now your device has successfully added to the app. Just tap next. And then in the top right hand corner, tap done. All right, and now I'm gonna show you some of the functions of this star projector on camera. Now, my camera is currently facing towards the roof so you can see exactly what it looks like. And now I'm gonna turn my lights off and the projector on. First up, we can simply change the brightness. You can set it all the way to 100, have it at around 50, or simply leave it really, really low. Now, I'm just gonna keep mine at around 80. Next up, we can change our two colors using the color wheel above. My favorite is a mix between a blue and a red. It looks like this. Now, you can move this any way you'd like in the color wheel, including allowing colors just to be by themselves. Here's another example. And next up is one of my other favorites, blue mixed with green. 
Now down the bottom, below the brightness, you can have the option to choose a third colour. The further you drag it down and the percentage goes down, the brighter that third colour will be. So if I add it in now, it's going to make a red into the mix. Now we can increase the percentage and it will be a little brighter. So it's basically in reverse. Let's keep it at around 19%. Next up, we can go to the laser setting, up the top next to colour, and then we can actually turn our stars on. Here, I think this is a little too much, so I like to set them to around 20%. Here you can just see them, but they're not in such an organised pattern. Now we can also change the speed of which that it all moves underneath that. Here, 100% speed, which moves really fast. And then we've got the 10% speed, which moves really slow. Next up, on the right hand side of the colour tab, we can tap Scene. Now in here, you can create your own custom scenario and tell your galaxy what to do. Whether it's change colours or even change the brightness. I'll show you how to set up your own scenes in a second. Once you open up the scenes tab, you'll see a few options that you can choose from. Now it's important that you know that you can change all the colors inside of these options, as well as the profile picture for it and the name of it. You can do this by tapping the scene you'd like to change and then tapping edit. In here, we can start off by changing the scene profile picture. Simply tap it and then you can choose something from your photo library. Next up, we can also change the scene name. I'm gonna change mine to nighttime. After that, we can change the scene colours and add new ones. I'm going to make mine something between a blue and a purple and change the brightness all the way to 50% for this one, as well as adding in our third colour. Now, I can also do this with the next colour by making this one a lot brighter and maybe saying it's going to be blue. Next up, we can use the plus to add even more colours. I'm going to make this colour red. Now, once we've made our changes, you need to tap submit at the very bottom. If you don't tap submit and you tap the arrow in the top left hand corner, your changes won't save. Once we've tapped submit, you should see that your scene should start to play. Now if you'd like to edit this some more, simply tap edit and I'm going to show you how to set up the colour flash mode. Here we can change it to static, which is just one colour, flash, which flashes between them, or breathe, which slowly transitions. Here we can also change the flash speed or the breathing speed of the colours. And once we've done all that, we need to tap submit for our changes to save. And this is what the scene that we just created looked like. Now, every time I go to sleep, all I need to do is go into the app and simply tap my scene and it will give me this while I'm falling asleep. Now, there are ways to automate this entire process of it turning on when you're about to go to sleep, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. And now I'm going to be showing you how to use the three controls for this device at the very bottom. We can start off by turning it off or on with the touch of a button. Here it's off, and once I tap it, it's on. Now, on the left-hand side of the on button, we can find the timer settings. Here, we can leave it for an hour, and then we can select it to turn either on or off. I'm gonna make my galaxy turn off after one hour, and then I'm gonna tap confirm. Now, we can also create a schedule. Now, this isn't just a one-off thing like the timer, and it can be repetitive. We can start off by tapping add, and then we can select the time that we'd like this to happen. I'm going to set mine at 12.30 p.m. Now we can choose when we'd like this to repeat. I'm only going to have this repeat on the weekends. Now we can also add a note if we'd like and we can ask it to notify us when it's about to do this. Now finally, at this time, 12.30, we can choose whether we'd like it to turn off or on. I'm going to make mine turn on. Now we've done this, it will turn on at 12.30 every weekend. Now to turn it off, you do the exact same thing. You set it to the time you'd like, tell it when to repeat, and then you can either ask it to send you a note or give you a notification. And I'm going to make mine turn off. So here you can see every weekend it turns on for one hour and then goes off. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to change the name and photo for your device. Start off by tapping it and then tap the pencil in the top right hand corner. Here you can tap the pencil once again next to the name and you'll be able to edit three things. Let's start off with icon. You can change this to something from your photo library. Next up, we can change the name. Here, we can call it whatever we'd like. I'm going to call mine Genio Galaxy. Next up, we can change the location if you've set up your house and you'd like to add it to a certain room. Once we've done this, we can go back and then we can also set it up with third party control if we'd like. Just tap it to get started. Here, you can pair it with a
or a Google Assistant. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to make a tap to run automation. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to set it up with Siri, so you can even ask Siri to turn in your projector. Start off by going into the Smart menu down the bottom. Here, tap the plus in the top right hand corner, and then tap Launch Tap to Run. It's at the very top. Next, at the very top once again, tap Run the Device. And here tap your Genio Galaxy, or whatever you chose to name it earlier. Now here we can choose from some functions that we'd like this tap to run to do. So whenever we tap the button or ask Siri to do something, I'm going to make mine turn on, go into color mode. Now you can also change your mode to scenes, which is what I showed you how to set up before. Next, I'll change my brightness to something regular, and then it will even ask me to change the percent. I like mine at 100. And for our timer, we can also change how long we want it to go on for. Now, of course, this isn't necessary and you don't have to fill every one of these boxes. It just gives you a wide range of customization options. Now, I find it a bit annoying that the timer is in seconds though. I'm just gonna set it to around 4,000 seconds. Now, we can also change the motor speed, which is really how fast the star and the galaxy all move. I like mine at around 50%. Not too fast, not too slow. For my lasers, I'd like mine on. Now we can also turn our RGB switch either on or off. You don't know what this is, it's just simply if you'd like the colourful galaxy or just the stars. If you want the colourful galaxy, simply tap RGB on. Now we can tap next. And here it will give you an overview of everything that it's going to do when you tap it or if you ask Siri to do it for you. Once you've finished all that, tap save. Now to get this automation set up with Siri, all you need to do is just tap add to Siri in the bottom right hand corner. Now tap add and then it will give you a short overview. Inside these speech marks, you can simply put in what you'd like the trigger word to be. I'm going to type in turn on my galaxy. And then it will do the tap to run that I just created. You don't need to touch anything in the do box. Now just tap add to Siri down the bottom. It may also ask you to actually say it. And there you go, you can tap done in the top right hand corner. And now if I ask Siri, turn on my galaxy. That's done. As you can see, it's actually turned on my galaxy to all the settings I set in my tap to run. There you go, how cool is that? And finally, I'm going to show you how to set up an automation. This means you don't actually have to tap something for it to work or ask Siri. Simply go down to the smart menu in the bottom and then at the top change from tap to run to automation tab. Here tap the plus in the right hand corner. For my automation I'm going to schedule something. Now I'm going to have this happen at 8.30pm and I want it to repeat every day in the week. Now I'll tap next in the top right hand corner and then it'll ask me what I'd like to do at this time. I'm going to make it run my device which is my Genio Galaxy. And once again, I can choose all the things I'd like it to do. I'm going to make it turn on. And all I simply want it to do is just go to my nighttime scene. And that's it. Because all of the brightness and the motor speed and the laser switch and the RGB has already been set up in my scene previously. The only thing that hasn't been set up is probably the timer. I'll make that around one hour. Now we can tap next in the top right hand corner. And there we go. We've got an overview of our automation and we can just tap save. Now I'm going to start using this immediately. So every day at 8.30 p.m. it's going to turn me to my nighttime scene. That's pretty cool. All right, and now it's time for the part of the video where I discuss any problems I had with this product and give it an overall review. Let's start off with value for money. In my opinion, I think this is pretty good value for money, considering that you can have three colors and it's not just a pick one certain color. You can mix and match as well as slide it around a color wheel to make custom colors. Now, I do feel like the stars would be a little nicer if they were a color other than green, as it's not really the color that stars normally are, and it does take away from the galaxy itself. However, it's important that you know that you can always just turn this down or simply turn it off, and you can have the galaxy just by itself. Now, in terms of aesthetics, I think it looks really nice. It's a clean white color, which I really do like, and the Mirabella Genio logo is all gray. Now, I also find it helpful that it's small, as it's good if you just want to pack it away, it doesn't take up too much space. 
but when it is projecting, it's not a massive obstacle you have to climb over if it's on the floor. Now, when using this projector, there was also a slight glitch in the app where it wouldn't let you change tabs. However, this can be easily fixed with a software update. Now, in terms of setup, I think it was pretty easy. The only slightly difficult part was finding where the button was. Now, something that I would like to see added is the option to turn off or on or even change the brightness of stars in the scenes menu as all scenes are going to have stars looking like this at the moment now adding on to this the distribution of the stars is actually very structured and isn't as random as stars usually are now what i find helpful is lowering the brightness of these stars and then going into the color section and then actually turning it on now it looks like the stars are a lot more randomly generated and they're not in one pattern now that's what it looks like with a bit better light control as you can see, the stars are still kind of in order, but with the galaxy, they look more spread out. Now, I also really love how some stars are a bit smaller and less bright than others. So this is why I'm giving this Mirabella Genia Wi-Fi Nebula and Star Projector a 4 out of 5 stars. And now the question is, do I recommend you buy this? Well, I'm going to be using this every day, as I really love it. I think it's a great way to display a galaxy on your wall, and it's a lot cheaper than other ones out there. So, yes, I think it's a great product. However, when buying it, you do need to take into consideration the problems I mentioned earlier. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you need any more help, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. You can also help me out by subscribing so I can keep on helping you. Until next time, this has been Easy As That. See ya! Now you're probably here because I've sent this timestamp to you in the comments to try and help solve your problem. Now, a reason why your projector might not be pairing with the app is number one, because your device and the projector aren't close enough to your Wi-Fi router. Make sure that you move them there. After you tried that and your device is still not pairing to the app, make sure that on the side, your button is still blinking rapidly. Even if you did try to make it blink rapidly before and it did, just double check. Because when I tried to pair it, at the start, it was blinking rapidly, and then when I was going to type in my Wi-Fi username and password, it had already stopped. So just make sure that you press and hold this button for five seconds, and then start to pair it. And you can tell it's ready because these two lights here are blinking rapidly.